and these are the brakes. These are the brakes. You know what it is. Hello everyone, today is December 6th, it is Tuesday, Taco Tuesday, happy Tuesday to everyone out there, uh, you know what this is, these are the breaks, welcome to this very dope episode, I'm happy for you guys to join me, I am the one and only Michael Matthew, here to give you all of the top and breaking news in the sports world and so much more today. Uh, we're going to start in, uh, you know, in the hardwood, the NBA. We have to talk about it. it's the quarter mark of the season right now. And I know I'm here in L.A., but I, I have to give love to our rivals, the Boston Celtics. Are they the team to beat right now? It, it's looking like it. They're 19 and 5. They're playing some great basketball there in the East. They're led by the guy who I might have to say. I might have to say it, everyone. He may be the MVP when it comes to the NBA season as, as of right now. Jason Tatum, man, uh, that light-skinned brother is putting in a lot of work. He's following in the steps of I'll Be Sure and Drake and all these all-time great light-skinned brothers who put in work. And he is doing this thing that's looking like he might be the MVP of the season. The Celtics are playing great ball. Everyone thought after everything that went on with their former head coach, uh, during the offseason that they would take a step back. But guys, these guys are hooping. Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, they are doing a lot of great things there. 19-5, and five, who would have expected them to keep this up? But I'm telling you guys, still, be on the lookout for the Milwaukee Bucks because Giannis, his, his partner is back. Chris Middleton is there and they're ready to go. They're going to round into shape. But I have to show love to the Celtics because, you know, they are balling. Shout out my guy, Hans. I know he's loving it. Uh, and here on the West Coast, the Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns are leading the way in the West, but can they withstand the Kardashian curse? If you haven't heard, it seems like Devin Brooks and uh said Devin Booker, excuse me, and uh Kendall Jenner have, have broken up and split up. And let's see how that's going to affect them. But I think they're a team full of hoopers. They're going to be all right. They've been playing well without a healthy Chris Paul because of guys like Devin Booker doing their thing, because DeAndre Ayton doing his thing. The Phoenix Suns are looking like the team that had the best record last year in the NBA. But you know with them, it's all about the playoffs. So let's see if they keep it up. Let's see if they can keep balling. But, hey, when they when you get more Kardashian news, it is very scary. And Kanye, when he went on the craziest, Twitter rant that you've ever seen or probably will ever see. He finished the day saying, hey, good night, everyone. Uh, I caught Chris Paul with my wife, uh, Kim Kardashian. Uh, but who knows if it's true? I don't know if we got the facts in yet. I hope we find out. But what a crazy situation. Who knew that Devin Booker was the better assist man, if it is true? Because if he was able to make that happen, what a crazy uh, assist that he had. But CP3 is a married man, beautiful children. I hope it isn't true, but I know we're going to find out more. So uh, shout out to those teams, the Celtics, the Suns. They're doing their thing. Let's see if they keep it up as the season goes on. But we have to talk surprises of the year so far since we are here at this quarter mark of the season. Uh, you have to go to Sacramento. Can, can you hear the cowbells? Can we finally hear the cowbells? Can we see some playoff basketball in Sacramento once again? It sure is looking like it because those guys are playing some really good basketball. They have so much talent. Uh, they, they put together a real great roster, a lot of young guys. You got De'Aaron Fox, you got Sabonis there, you got Herter, you got King, Keegan Murray, you got a vet like Harrison Barnes who is helping. Uh, you know, you got uh, Mitchell there that's coming off the bench. They have a lot of talent over there, but it seems like they finally got that guy to lead this team. So shout out to the one and only former Laker coach, Mike Brown, who is doing a great, great job over there, along with my other surprise, uh, who is struggling, the Warriors, who's trying to figure things out. Maybe a guy that we need to talk about more is Mike Brown. He was their defensive coach, the guys that made sure that they were accountable on that end of the floor, the guy who was communicating with Draymond a lot to make sure that unit was great 
Don't forget, the years they win the championships, they're always a top five defense. And right now they're struggling. And it might be because of Mike Brown being in Sacramento and making the guys in Sacramento play defense. So shout out to the Kings. They're playing some great hoop. But it's all about keeping it up. You know, we, we like the season. It's 82 games. It's a long season. We only talk about you more if you make it to the postseason. So let's see what happens. And then I have to give a shout out to uh, the Cleveland LeBrons. I, I'm joking, Cleveland. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're playing some great basketball, but it should have been expected. You added a, a piece like Spider Mitchell. You have Evan Mobley in his second year. You have Jared Allen there. And then Darius Garland is looking like Chris Paul Light, shall I say. And they're playing some really good basketball. So let's see if the Kings and the uh, Cavaliers can keep it up because those are my surprise teams so far. But... I have to take you to L.A., baby. We have to talk about the Showtime Lakers who are on a tear. I am so excited about this. They are playing good basketball and shutting up all of the naysayers. Uh, they deserve some hand claps for everybody out there because they're doing their thing. And the switch has been flipped for Anthony Davis. He is playing some great basketball. The Lakers are now 10 and 12 for the season, 8 and 2 in the last 10 games. And it seems like Coach Darvin Ham is getting to these guys they're playing defense and they're doing the thing i felt they should have been doing for a long time and that is playing through anthony davis anthony davis is on fire he just scored 55 points with 18 rebounds the guy is unstoppable with him playing like this he is clearly a top three top five nba player today it's all about health so my fingers are crossed but you know they're doing some great things man the lakers are playing great ad is he the new king of L.A.? I think the team has been built to for it to be that. I think he should have been the guy going forward. Um, he's averaging 34 points and 15 rebounds in these last 10 games. And it seems like LeBron, man, shout out to him. I'm going to give him credit. I always give him a hard time on social media and on other shows. But I'm going to give him credit because he came in and he says, hey, I'm back from injury. And I realized that this guy is playing some amazing basketball. I'm going to take a slight step back and let him be who he is is and he is playing amazing so shout out to anthony davis doing a great job and shout out to rob palinka he was like ah oh, you guys can keep talking about this rush trade twitter's i swear it's a bunch of nba gms on twitter that uh we need to uh find out who they are because they for sure think they have the answer to the lakers but palinka knows something that's why he has a job that's why he's paid the big bucks damn it that's why they gave him an extension because he knows that he he has a team that can do a little bit of something you know you have guys that are playing some really good uh basketball lonnie walker is doing his thing but he says i trust in russ off the bench shout out to uh darvin ham who was able to have the balls to say russ i need you to come off the bench i don't give a damn about triple doubles i don't give a damn about the mvps i just know this is what's going to help this team win and he was able to step up and do his thing as a coach and say hey do this you might even be able to get a six man of the year award so shout out to the lakers they're playing some great great basketball and i've always said it with a healthy lebron a healthy ad a healthy russ and some pieces that are playing some solid basketball you do not want to see this laker team in the playoff because they will be a tough tough out especially if ad is playing this mvp type of basketball and i know i said tatum is the guy right now and i agree but if ad can keep this up um, and the Lakers can move up in the rankings and end up somewhere in the top six in the West, that guy will be the MVP of the season. So I have to talk about more in uh, basketball. Another name uh, that's a big-time name. And Nike, we have to talk about Nike because they made a move. They actually released a player, and his name is Kyrie Irving. He is no longer uh, with the Nike athletes, um, as announced by Nike, due to you know the anti-Semitism uh, post that he had um yeah it's crazy because when you talk to a bunch of hoopers out there i'm a guy that still try to get out there and play a little bit of basketball here and there everyone has loved the kyrie irving shoe uh it's one of the top shoes that uh people play in when you go play pick a bar at your local 24-hour fitness la fitness so uh it's gonna be a a crazy loss but i don't think kyrie is too worried about it um, I think Kyrie has a big enough brand. He has a big enough name that somebody's going to try to pick him up. Of course, he's going to have to talk to the next brand about 
everything when it comes to the Jews and his beliefs and stuff like that. But I think that somebody is going to take a chance on him, especially if the Nets can start to win and win more. But maybe he doesn't need a shoe deal. I don't think Kyrie really much cares about any of this stuff uh, right now. He just wants to get out there and hoop and play basketball and do what he do. So I don't think that he really cares too much about it because Kyrie, he has done his part. Uh, he donated 500K uh, to eradicate hate. Uh, per the Nets requirement. He gave 60K to the oldest black Muslim school in the NYC. Uh, so I don't think Kyrie really cares if he has a shoe deal or not. It is great money, but he moves differently than all of us anyways. So I, I think he's like, oh, I'm with Nike. I'm without Nike. It doesn't matter. I am Kyrie Irving. But you know, I can't let somebody off the hook. And that is going to be Balenciaga. I have to talk about them because not only do I think they have some of the worst shoes that are ever worn. They had a campaign, an ad campaign that dropped that was very embarrassing. I don't know why there wasn't anyone who said, hey, we should not drop this. This is a terrible idea, but they did it anyway. And it, it is an ad campaign that a lot are saying is promoting pedophilia. Um, and it was it was surprising. It's still not canceled yet to this day. Uh, something has to be done because I know one thing: when Kyrie and Kanye had their issues and still have their issues to this day, it's all over the media. It's all over uh, Twitter world. But Balenciaga. I haven't seen too much of it. Maybe I'm not looking for it, but I know with Kyrie and Kanye, you didn't have to look for it. It was thrown in your face. Kyrie will play a basketball game and after games will be asked about these things when it comes, um, you know, to, to the Jews. And you hear not much about uh, Balenciaga. Um, so I'm hoping that we hear more about it. I'm hoping that we get what we want with the ad being canceled because it was big. When you had LeBron James come out and says, I want the same smoke uh, when he brought up the picture of Jerry Jones. Uh, I don't think that it was all about trying to call out Jerry Jones, even though we do need to hear something from him. It was just about, hey, where's the same smoke at? Everybody was talking about Kyrie when it came to the NBA ranks. Uh, but I don't hear nothing about Jerry Jones. You're not hearing much about uh, Balenciaga. And with me, I guess I call myself a media member. Uh, we need to make sure that we are responsible for stepping up and stepping out and, and asking questions about everything. So why not show up? to these arenas and ask about what you feel about the Balenciaga campaign. Why not show up and ask about what's your thoughts on Jerry Jones? Because we have to make these people accountable. And me being a black man, I know that whenever we make a mistake, it is magnified and we want to make sure that everything is magnified on all ends so hopefully we hear more about this uh balenciaga ad and hopefully jerry jones can come out and say something and lebron keep doing what you're doing kudos to you but we need more we need more players to be asking questions impressing the media we press the players. They should be able to press back and say, when can we hear more? So, hey, I can't wait to hear it. So, are we going to a break here? Yes, sir. So, we're about to get out of here. It's a break. You know what it is. These are the breaks. I will be back with you with some NFL news. Hey, I can't wait for you guys because I have to talk about my Chiefs. I don't know if it's going to be a great uh, topic for you Chiefs fans, but, hey, you're going to have to listen anyway. These are the breaks, baby. Hey guys, you got to check out the Pure Life Alternative Wellness Center. It's a family-owned and operated pre-ICO, Prop D compliant, and recreational collective serving Chatsworth, the San Fernando Valley, and the surrounding Los Angeles areas. They offer discounts for all our veterans and seniors 55 plus, as well as first-time patient and referral discounts. You can order online at purelifesfv.org. That's purelifesfv.org. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Check it out. 
Welcome back, everyone. You know what it is. These are the breaks, and I am your guy, Michael Matthew. And I have to take you to the gridiron and talk some NFL football. We're going to take you to San Francisco. We're going to keep it on the West Coast, take it to the Yay area. And we have to talk about Jimmy Garoppolo. Man, I really feel sorry for these uh, Niner fans. First, you lose Trey Lance to a season-ending injury, and now you, you lose Jimmy G, who has, has a broken foot. He is out for the remainder of the season. Brock Purdy, hey, your name is being called Mystery Relevant himself. The final pick of this year's draft is stepping in. He came in and got a big win against the Miami Dolphins, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. It's going to be a lot of pressure on him. Just know this, if he could somehow lead them to the Super Bowl game and possibly a Super Bowl win, this may be the biggest story that we've had in a long time, maybe comparable to Tom Brady taking the Patriots to the Super Bowl and winning when he was much, much younger, but he was at least a second year player. This guy is a rookie who has to step up with with a team who was built to win a Super Bowl now. With that defense, with McCaffrey in the backfield, with uh, Ayuk, with Debo Samuel and George Kittle, let's see if this guy can do his thing. Hey, Mr. Purdy, let's see how Purdy you really are, and let's see if you can lead this team to a Super Bowl. And Chiefs Kingdom, we are here. But I'm sorry, I have to say this. I think the Bengals might kind of own this right now. <laughs> Uh, they're three and zero when it comes to the year of 2022. They have given us a hard time. I don't know why we can't figure them out. I don't know why we can't make the plays to win this latest game. Uh, we couldn't stop the run. Joe Burrow made some big time throws, looking like Joe Cool Part Two. And Travis Kelsey does what he usually doesn't do, which is fumble the ball. And he fumbled the ball that led to a loss for the Chiefs, 27-24. Tough, tough loss, but don't panic. The Chiefs are okay at 9-3. and three, They are still atop of the AFC tie with the Buffalo Bills, who do have the tiebreaker. But, damn it, they're going to have to see the Bengals again. They're going to have to figure something out. Um, I like that the running game is working. Uh, Mahomes is doing enough, but they need to figure out more. Mr. Pat, Patrick Mahomes. Hey, don't be scared to dump the ball off to your backs. Let them make plays for you. But they're going to be okay. We just have to figure out the Bengals. I don't know why they continue to have our numbers, but they do. But I don't think it's going to be for long, but we'll see. Uh, shout out to the Cowboys. The Is that still America's team? Because they are doing their thing. They slaughtered the Colts 54-19 to keep the train rolling. The Cowboys look amazing. And I've always said it. I don't trust the Eagles. I don't think that they have enough to do it in the playoffs. I think that they're built for the regular season. They, they've done a really great job. They're picking up some big wins. But shall I say this now? I know Skip Bayless, if you were to see this, will be jumping up and down in his house and saying, I have another believer. But I think it is the Cowboys who should be the favorite in the NFC. They have everything you need. They have the big money quarterback who is making some plays. They have two really good running backs in Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard who are playing really good football. They have some receivers. CeeDee Lamb is doing his thing. Mike Gallup is looking like he is rounding into shape and making plays for this team. OBJ was just at the game in Dallas with, with Diggs and Michael Parsons, who's there on defense making plays and doing their thing. So if you can add a piece like OBJ, like why not? Why not it be the Cowboys in the Super Bowl playing for all the marbles? I just think that they have put the money down. They are built for it. They have a coach who has a Super Bowl already who is doing his thing and, and he knows what winning football looks like so i think the cowboys might actually be the team to be in the nfc i know tom brady is still there he's still alive and kicking they just picked up a, a big win last night coming back when it looked like they had no chance at all against the saints and it looks like they're going to win that division and until somebody can defeat tom brady and throw him away we're going to continue to believe but i'm telling you america this cowboy team looks like they are are for, for real. We're going to see them play the Eagles this season and I think that they may take care of business and it, what an amazing Super Bowl it would be for me and all the football fans if we could see Patrick Mahomes versus the Dallas Cowboys both of America's teams I feel uh, playing in the Super Bowl. It would be the greatest thing ever and I hope that we get to see it. So Cowboys, 
We know what you do. We know that Stephen A is waiting to laugh at you guys. So make sure that you get it together and try to finish the season with the bang. But I have to take us to the L.A. We talked about the Lakers with the NBA. We have to talk about the L.A. Rams, the defending Super Bowl champions. Who? How long do we get to keep this title, Jeff? I, I don't know if they're looking like they are the defending champions. They are looking terrible, like uh, Chuck will say. And they're just bad. Uh, you're not hearing Aaron Donald's name. The injury bug is killing them. Matt Stafford is out for the year. Uh, who would have thought? Uh, a lot of guys came into the season saying that this was the team that could win the Super Bowl and do it back to back, which we haven't seen in a long time. And it has been a total embarrassing out there. Uh, it's been really bad. So uh, the Rams, you you have to figure it out. Um next season because it looks like it's over and you might be joined by another la team the Chargers, who just find a way to lose they went up to las vegas and they found a way to lose to the las vegas raiders and they're desperately very desperately trying to hold on to a playoff spot but i don't know if they're going to be able to hold on too much longer because the Chargers are going to do what what the Chargers do so i have to take you to the mlb now people are getting paid money um, and we have to talk about it because we love money. Justin Verlander, the reigning Cy Young winner and champion, he has signed a two-year deal with the Mets. $86 million. The guy got the big bucks. And he just seems like he just he's a Tom Brady of baseball. This guy is never fading away, it looks like. He continues to ball out. One of the greatest pitchers of all time. Much respect to him. And now he's in New York. The Mets are like, maybe we have a chance. So let's see if Verlander can be that guy that puts them over the top there in the NL. And speaking of the NL, you take away from the Dodgers, Trey Turner, who I call the modern age, uh, Derek Jeter. He leaves to go to the Phillies for 11 years, $300 million. Man, I shouted you out on Instagram. Hey, what a great guy, fun guy to uh, cover this year. Very cool. And he got his money and got paid. So what would the Dodgers do next? Maybe it'll be Aaron Judge. We're going to have to see. Hey, we're going to take you to a break. Because these are the breaks, baby. Hi, I'm Renee Starms of the Starms Agency. Do you know why 97% of startups fail? It's because they don't have the proper exposure. So for the first time ever, Infinity Studios and the Starms Agency have come together to provide you with the Little Guys Big Marketing Package. Now, this is for local Los Angeles businesses who are ready to launch relaunch, or simply expose their business to grow. With this package, you're going to receive six months of online and offline marketing tactics in a customized plan for your business. You're also going to get a professional TV quality commercial filmed in an 1800 square foot studio with multiple screening options. So if you're ready to grow, go ahead and click that link. We also have financing available. I'm looking forward to chat with you. Click the link and let's go. Hey, welcome back. Mike Hill Matthew here and these are the breaks. If, if you don't know where that's from, make sure you go and search up uh, that song. Just type it into Google and it'll lead you, steer you into the right direction because you know it's hip hop, baby. And speaking of hip hop, I have to give a shout out. It was a guy who celebrated his 53rd birthday a couple days ago, and his name is the one and only Sean Carter. Jay Z, um, happy birthday to that guy, one of the greatest MCs to ever live. He has done his thing for a long, long time. The guy is amazing, he has great albums, great records great lyrics he has everything and he's a billionaire uh the guy is doing his thing and, and I, I have to give him a shout out because i think that he is one of those rappers that can carry the torch of greatest of all time when it comes to the game of hip-hop you got biggie you got tupac you got eminem you got nas and you have jay-z so speaking of jay-z speaking of nas i have to talk about 21 savage and lil boosie they came out and said that relevance we're talking about relevance and they said these guys aren't relevant anymore so i have to discuss this because i think when you talk about legends their relevance lasts 
forever, especially in the music game. That's why Jay-Z, Nas, whenever they hop on a new record, you want to go and listen to the verse. Whenever they drop anything, you want to go listen to it. And I know the argument, you're not hearing them in the club. But the club doesn't tell you who the best rappers are. I don't remember everyone banging Eminem. I don't remember everyone banging the newest Kendrick Lamar. But you know that great rappers are great rappers. And those guys are forever relevant. So don't you dare say that they aren't. You know, these guys can make any song and they're going to make it a classic. Think about Nas. He just dropped the latest of his King disease. Him and Hit Boy seem like they cannot miss these guys are three for three four for four if you include magic but king disease three is an amazing album if you haven't heard it go and listen to it relevant jay-z's latest album 444 was a great great album it had him talk more about his life than we've ever seen before and damn it what were we talking about for a while god did with his verse that he gave us one of the greatest verses of his catalog and it was talked about on all the airwaves. And these guys are so great, the Jay-Z's, the Nas's, the Eminem's, that they don't need the clubs because, damn it, their records are played in arenas, in stadiums. And that is relevant today. So 21 Savage, I know you did the record with Nas to try to make it up. Uh, Lil Boosie, you guys are wrong. These guys are forever relevant. Damn it, they can be six years old, and if they want to drop a verse, everybody's going to want to say, hey, I need to go and check this out. You know, much respect to the new school guys, the little babies, and all the guys like that, the little Uzi verse. But these guys are forever relevant because of what they did to get to this point of their careers. They are the OGs. They are the legends. And we have to show them respect. From a guy who's a huge hip-hop fan, these guys forever get played from me. That's why if you look at your Spotify wrap-up, these guys are going to always be in my top five because they are forever relevant. Hey, this is Michael Matthew. This is the episode for you. Tuesday, December 6th. You know I got you. Make sure you guys come back next Tuesday. Happy Taco Tuesday. Go and get all of the tacos that you guys want today and enjoy the rest of your day, baby. Michael out.